Watch this video if you want a simple cash management plan for your retirement. See, retirement is not as fun if you get there and 100% of your money is in IRAs or 401ks and you don't have easy access to cash. So if you're getting near retirement, you wanna have a plan for what that's going to look like and I'll give you the three parts today. And those three parts are what money you should have when you stop working, how to keep the money working for you, and how to replenish that money throughout retirement. But first, I'm Nick Davis, founder of Brindle and Bay Wealth Management. We're here to show you how to retire with calmness and clarity. If you wanna see more information like this, more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure you like the video if you like it. Thank you. So how should you be thinking about cash when you stop working? Well, you're gonna to wanna to have money that you're going to need when you get there. So the money that you need to keep in cash when you first start retiring. And then second, you wanna have a way to keep that money working for you. And third, you wanna have a way to replenish that money. So let's cover this one by one. First, what cash do you need? Well, you need emergency cash, you need big things cash, and you need mindset cash. Emergency cash, pretty obvious. You wanna have some type of an emergency fund, commonly recommended as six months. Easy way to think about that would be is if you're going to spend $60,000 a year outside of social security, which is a stable income source, then maybe you would say, I need $30,000 in my emergency savings, and that would be your number. And that money is used for medicine and uh, air conditioning units when they go bad, things like that that's just not part of your normal income stream. Next, you want big things. This is commonly overlooked, but think about maybe a guy who wants a tractor when he stops working or a lady who wants to remodel the kitchen when she stops working. Or a lot of times people will do a larger celebration vacation that's just no larger than normally budgeted vacations. This one's a tough one because it makes you think a little bit. And next it's mindset money. Mindset money is any money that's above that emergency savings number that just feels right. So some families have said, well, I've always had X amount of dollars that's there for me whenever I need it. It's given me a good comfort. As long as that money doesn't really take away from the success of your financial plan in total, it's a good idea to just have that mindset money there as well. Now you wanna create a plan to get there if you're not there already. So you may already have that money. In that case, you would just earmark it, or you might be several years away from retirement and you could or should redirect some of that cash to your cash plan for the future instead of extra savings for retirement. Either way, if you start early, it's easier to put a plan together. We always make sure that people have a plan when they get to retirement so that they're not surprised and neither are we. And if you've got five years or so, you could divide that into those five years, do the math, and it's just painless way to have cash when you get there. Now, here's a tip. You don't want to underestimate your big needs. Oftentimes when we do a Zoom meeting with somebody, uh, we'll sit there and ask a person what those are and there's an awkward silence because they haven't thought too much about that. One time we asked, um, how are you gonna commemorate your retirement when you stop working? And this person had not ever thought about that. In fact, they never even took vacations for themselves, hardly ever. And we allowed the awkward silence and this person spouted out and their face lit up and said, I, I, I actually, I've always wanted to go on an African safari. Personally, I've never wanted to do that, uh, <laughs> but this person wanted to. So they put it into their plan. They're about three years from retirement to be able to make sure that, that when that comes, that day comes, they can use it to commemorate the retirement. Plus also it's, it's not so painful. It's not money that's going to be coming from their income generating plan. It's something that they had planned for. And let me tell you that money that you plan to spend spends a whole lot better than when you put it on a credit card or have to pull it from an unfortunate situation. Another reason you want to have this cash plan is it is painful to take money from an IRA or a 401k if you don't have money in other places. There's less of a desire to pull money from a traditional IRA to put down on a piece of property or to do something because you got to pay the taxes from it. Planning ahead can help you to avoid that discomfort. The conundrum is if you have too much cash for too long, 
Well, that works against you because you're not working to outpace inflation. There is a balance between how much money you have working for you in your stock and bond portfolio versus how much you have working for you in CDs, short-term treasuries, and money market. But in general, the purpose of your cash management plan is to cover needs that are not going to come from your normal retirement income plan that you set up. There's a delicate balance for how much a person needs, but if you follow the example of emergency funds, big purchases, and mindset money, you can get yourself there. And then once you use your emergency savings, how do you replenish it? Right? I mean, you don't want to leave it at zero. You want to probably replenish it. So you should probably have a plan for how it's going to replenish. And I'll tell you the three ways that we see people doing that. The first one is obviously, if you have extra money from Social Security or money that you had to pull out of your portfolio for required minimum distributions, you can use that money and people use that money to refill their emergency savings. Or if you have dividends, most people should have dividends and interest because. You have a diversified portfolio, and rather than reinvesting those dividends, they can be used to uh, be harvested and put back into your emergency savings. And then the third way is to find extra tax room. So what that means is that if you're in the, let's say, 22% tax bracket, and you know that there's five or $10,000 of room left before you bump up to the next bracket, you could take what you need at that tax level and place that in your emergency savings. So those are the three common ways that we see people replenishing their cash during retirement years. So if you don't have a cash plan in place, get started today. Let me know in the comments if there's something that you would add to this. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see the way that we help people to create calmness and clarity for their next chapter of life, take a look at us at brindleandbay.com. Again, thanks for watching the videos. Please remember to subscribe hit that notification bell so that you are notified every time a new video comes out.